Hello and welcome to Simultaneous Equations, but using substitution. Now, interestingly, you'll probably sit there and go, well, what do you mean substitution? And more importantly, what's a simultaneous equation? Well, there are a number of questions that we'll answer over the course of this lesson. <clears throat> so firstly, let's go and see what the key questions were. Number one, what are simultaneous equations? Well, that seems a fairly obvious slipping question. What are we thinking about? Why would I want to solve them? What do they look like? And then solve the four missing letters using substitution. Now, I don't know about you, but I suppose we should highlight the idea of what an equation is. And what we've already seen is that equations come in many different forms. The most obvious is something like y equals 3x plus 2. When we look at this type of an equation, what do we know? Well, we know it's probably a straight line. Well, not even probably a straight line. It is a straight line that has a gradient of 3 and a y-intercept of plus 2. Well, straight lines are straight lines. But what about if we wrote it a different way? What about if we said, for example, 3x minus y is negative 2? Now, you might say, well, that's a completely different line. And I'll be like, actually, no, it isn't. All I've done is taken that top equation here and rearranged it into a different form. And yes, we know that this is, in fact, intercept form. Depending on the application of what the question is asking us to do, depends on which format of the equation is actually useful to us. And when we're doing simultaneous equations, we tend to like things to be written in intercept form. It actually makes our life a lot, lot easier. So, as I say here, we have indeed met a lot of equations recently. Most of them are dealing with straight lines, which we know that we can write in the gradient intercept form or the intercept form. So let's have a look at the difference of the graphs. So here we have y equals minus x plus 4. What do I notice? I notice it crosses through 4 on both the x and the y intercepts. Why is that? Well, actually, when we write it, the same equation in the intercept form, then what we notice is we end up with an equation that says x plus y equals 4. And if you remember, this here is called the y-axis, but is also the line x equals 0. And this is the x-axis also known as the line y equals 0. And if you remember, we can find the crossing points on each of them by letting x equals 0 and letting y equals 0. So when x equals 0, we end up that y equals 4. And with y equals 0, we end that x equals 4. And if we look at the fact that there's an x and a y, these are effectively just coordinates. And we need to be careful with the second one here that we write them the right way around. So we said previously that intercept form is actually really useful to us. But so far we've been dealing with just one equation. Well, graphs don't have to have just one equation, as we can see here. So if I make it actually so that it fits the whole screen, what we notice is that here we have two equations. And again, making it smaller so that it fits on the screen. So this one now has two equations. Again, both of these equations are written in intercept form. This one is x plus y equals 4, the graph we were dealing with just a moment ago, where we had the intercepts at 0, 4, and 4, comma 0. But now I've added a second graph. This second graph says 2x minus y equals 2. Now, checking, can we find our x and y axis intercepts? Well, yes, again, if we let x equals 0, we're going to find our y-axis intercepts, which gives that y is negative 2. And if we go back to 2x minus y equals 2 again, but this time we make y equals 0, this term disappears, which gives us that x equals 1. So our crossing points are 0, comma, minus 2 and 1, comma, 0. Now this one here, this 0, comma, minus 2 is actually too far off the graph. As you can see, my graph finishes at minus 0 0.5. But, 1, 0, yep, that was one of them we were expecting. When we plot both of these graphs, or we draw both of these graphs on the same set of axes, we notice they actually cross at one point. Now, what that means is, and if you look, there is one point where they share both the x and the y value. So, at one point on both of these graphs, the x and the y value are identical. And lo and behold, that's actually what we're doing when we're solving simultaneous equations. 
my handwriting is getting worse. All right, that's because I'm trying to do this quickly. Now, when we have simultaneous equations, what we're really doing is saying, well, there's two lines that cross. At what position do they cross? Now, because we're dealing with graphs, we're always looking for the value of a coordinate. And in this situation, when I solve the equation of 2x minus y equals 2 and x plus y equals 4 and put them together and do some funky magic, then what I'm doing is saying what x value and what y value are the same on each graph. Simultaneous equations are great. They are funky, all right? And they are basically just a recipe. We can solve simultaneous equations in a number of ways. One, graphically. And I've just given you an example there of a way that we could solve them graphically by actually drawing them on a graph and finding the point that they intersect. That's not always the quickest way. By the time we draw graphs, we're like, whoa, that was long. Then there's what we call algebraically, which bizarrely uses algebra. And we can do that by substitution, by elimination, or for things like further maths and mass methods, and maybe later on in this course, using matrices. Or a particular favorite of mine is ACAS calculators. Right? If we have a calculator and it can do all the hard work for us, why not use it? Ah, uh, you're screaming at me now, aren't you? That's actually the reason we don't use our CAS calculator is because some of the questions and some of the papers are technology free. So yes, I'm going to show you how to do it algebraically in two different ways. And the first one is solving it by substitution. Now, I know about you and I don't know too much about soccer and I don't know too much about AFL or Aussie rules football or Australia football. But what I do know is that substitution means if there is a player on the field and I substitute them by holding on that board that will have a number and another number, then what I'm effectively saying is I'm going to send one player on and take another player off. I'm going to literally substitute. I'm going to take something out and put something of equal value in its place. And that's very much what this simultaneous equations mean. Now again, remember that where two lines cross, at one point and one point only, the x values and the y values are exactly the same, which means we can substitute. Right, so we have two equations here. We know that we've got 2x minus 3y equals minus 8, and we have that y is equal to x plus 3. Remember, we know that for these two equations, equation 1 and equation 2, at one point and one point only, this y value here and that y value there are exactly the same. And if they're exactly the same, it means we can substitute them. So 2x minus 3y equals minus 8. I can take this y value out and replace it now with x plus 3. Right? I've taken the y value here and I've substituted it for the x plus 3 because at one point and one point only, they are the same. Now, what you'll notice is because the y has only one letter and because this has two terms, when I substitute, I always make sure I write them in brackets. Now, that's particularly important with minus signs here. Now, what do I notice? I've got an x term and an x term. So I'm going to multiply up these brackets. Give me 2x minus 3x minus 9 equals minus 8. Simplify the 2x minus 3x to give me 1x. And I'm going to add 9 to both sides, which gives me x equals 1. And you might say, that's the end of my question. No, it is not. We've only found half the question. Remember, we have to find a coordinate position. And I've only found half of that coordinate position. So I now need to find the value of y. Well, how do I know what the value of y is? Well, as it turns out, they've given you two equations here, which at one point and one point only, the y values are the same and the x values are the same, which means I can substitute the value of x into either of these equations and I'll get the same answer. So choosing the easier one, y equals x plus 3. So y is equal to 1 plus 3, which gives me y equals 4. And because this is really important, I would write the solution as a coordinate. So my solution is equal to 1 comma 4. Don't ever write x equals 1, x equals 4, or whatever, or x equals 1, y equals 4. Always write your solution as a coordinate, unless the question asks you in a different way. 
Here's a second example. Two more equations. Y equals minus 3x plus 2 and y equals 7x minus 8. Again, remember, at that one crossing point, my x values and y values are identical. So what that means is these two values at one point and one point only must be the same. And I suppose logic would suggest if they are the same, then these two here must be exactly the same. And that's the true. Because I've got y equals and y equals and they're the same y, that means if these two are the same, then these two must be the same. And I can just write that as an equation. Just putting the left hand side of, uh, sorry, the right hand side of equation one and the right hand side of equation two together because we know the y's are the same. This now makes life a lot, lot easier. I'm going to add 3x to both sides, which is going to give me plus 2 is equal to 10x minus 8. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. 10 equals 10x. So x is equal to 1. That's the end of my question. Yes, no, because having found x, I then need to find my y value. And once again, it doesn't matter which equation you use. As long as you use one of them, then you find that y is equal to 7x minus 8. y is equal to 7 minus 8. So y must be minus 1. That's the final answer, is it? Yes, no. So I would write my solution is equal to 1 comma minus 1. Now, maths can also always trick you, all right? We don't always have to substitute for the y value. In this situation, they're trying to trick us by saying, well, x is equal to 3y minus 2. Well, if they give me an equation with x equals, then I can actually substitute it in here. Because everywhere I see an x, I can replace it. So I've got 2y minus 2x equals 8. Right, well, I know what x is. I'm going to replace it. But because I'm replacing one thing with more than one, I'm actually going to delete that, put a set of brackets, and write in 3y minus 2 is equal to 8. Right? Remember, that's what x equals, and I've just replaced it with a set of brackets. Multiply out the brackets. 7y minus 6y plus 4 equals 8. So 7y minus 6y is y. We're liking this already. Take away 4 from both sides to get rid of this. Gives me 4. And with y equals 4... I can now say, well, we know that x is equal to 3y minus 2. If y is 4, 3y must be 12. And so x equals 10. And therefore, with the dots, my solution is equal to 10, 4. All right, there you go. That's everything you need to know for substitution. Uh, please be gone and practice, practice, practice. Because a practice makes perfect. And I look forward to seeing you the next time where we look at... Wow, simultaneous equations with elimination.